Well, how is it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. If you guys are new to this channel, I make it my goal on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers. And so if you guys enjoy bass fishing and you wanna learn more about how to catch more fish, make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel and have those post notifications turned on, that little bell down there. Turn that thing on, that way you guys never miss a single video that I put out. Uh, but before we hop into my singular tackle box for all winter scenarios, I have to talk about a really cool announcement for you guys that I've been having in the works for what seems like years now, but the idea really about a year in my head, and that is my new merch brand. It is not Tyler's Real Fishing merch, it is a little bit different, and it's what's on my hat right here. I am super excited to share with you guys a short video about what this brand is and why I hope you guys can jump in with us. How's it going everybody? My name is Tyler Anderson and for the past eight years I have made fishing and outdoor media on YouTube and other social media sites and it's been an incredible blessing in my life. You know, like many other influencers, I desire greatly to have clothing for my audience to be able to wear, merch as you can call it, on their fishing and outdoor adventures. But the more that I thought about it, the more I realized I have an incredible opportunity if I use this clothing wisely to do great things in the world. And with that line of thinking was spawned the clothing brand Infinite Outdoors. Infinite Outdoors is a company with two distinct meanings to its name. The first meaning of infinite is that, you know, here in the outdoors, we have infinite possibilities of making memories with our family and friends. I don't care if you're talking fishing, hunting, hiking, disc golf, really anything in the outdoors. There are so many ways, infinite ways, as you could say, uh, to make memories with your friends and your family. The second meaning that I have for the term infinite is much more important to me than the first. If you guys know anything about my channel, you know that my faith in Jesus Christ is foundational to my life, and I want everything that I do, whether it's personal or business, to revolve around that. My main goal in life is to make sure that the name of Jesus Christ is magnified and glorified in any venture that I partake in, whether it's my personal life or my business life in Tyler's Real Fishing. And I believe that Infinite Outdoors satisfies that perfectly. I believe that we serve a God that is so infinite in his love and mercy that he would send his one and only son to live a perfect life, die a death that we deserved, all so that we can have a relationship with him again. A God that is so infinite in his justice and his power is also equally as infinite in his love and his mercy. And I I want this brand, Infinite Outdoors, to be a conversation starter around that topic. And of course, to make this deal even sweeter, 10% of all the profits will be given to Christian Outdoor Focus Ministries, the first of those being Kids Outdoor Zone. To find out more about Kids Outdoor Zone, visit the link in my website. So thank you all so much for this opportunity. I wake up every single day and I'm so grateful that I get to create content for you guys. And without your support, I would not be able to start a brand like Infinite Outdoors. So if y'all are curious about the types of clothing we have, make sure you guys check out shopinfiniteoutdoors.com for all your outdoor clothing needs. And I hope this clothing brand serves, like I said, as a conversation starter for the gospel. We'll see you guys out there. So again, I can't thank you guys enough. Without you, I would not be able to start a brand like this. And so if you are encouraged by that, that the ideals of this brand and you wanna hop in with us, or you just like the uh, the look of the clothing and you don't even wanna go into the meaning of the clothing, you just wanna wear it and support the channel, that is the best way to help support the Tyler's Real Fishing channel. So the link will be in the description below for you guys to check out the official launch of Infinite Outdoors. But enough hoopla, let's hop into the content. So uh, I copied this video from Alex Rudd. As I mentioned, he's a great buddy of mine. I have a lot of respect for Alex. He has a lot of respect for me and he just made a genius video series talking about a single tackle box that you guys can pack whether you're bank fishing, boat fishing, kayak, anything in between to catch bass no matter where you live in the country. Now I watched Alex's video and his tackle box is actually quite a bit different than mine because he lives in northeast Tennessee. So his fisheries, his fishing experience, the species he's going for are a little bit different and those fish act differently than the fish here in Texas. It is November 24th right now when I'm recording this video and uh, winter is not quite here yet. Winter has reached Northeast Tennessee, at least to an extent. They've had way more cold fronts. The water's a lot colder. And so his box is probably a lot more in use right now. This here, a lot of these lures, not quite thrown yet because winter has not quite reached Texas. But this is generally the winter lures that I throw when it comes to Texas, Oklahoma, Alabama, that kind of Southern part of the country here where our fisheries are all about the same. And so that doesn't mean you cannot use these lures and find success in Missouri, uh, Indiana, you know, any lakes that don't have frozen water, uh, you can, but I'm just saying this is tailored to my experience as a Texas southern based bass angler. And so without further ado, let's talk about my first category of baits in my winter fishing tackle box, and that is moving baits. So I've actually strapped the chest mount on my chest to let you guys see a better angle of my tackle box. Hopefully it's wide enough. I'll kind of 
try to raise it up here. Sorry if my chest kind of looks weird throughout this video, but I want to give you guys a good vantage point of what my tackle box looks like. So when it comes to moving baits, that's going to be most of my tackle box. In the winter, I do slow down, but the amount of lures that I have in my slow down category, I could call it, uh, are not very broad. There's not very many of them that I throw in the winter time. I really stick to the hard bait category for most of my fishing lures in the winter time. And so that's what you're going to see in this box here. So my number one moving lure for the winter, I don't care if the water temperature is, is 37 or 55, which is, you know, the 50s is kind of the Texas winter water temperature. I'm going to throw a jerk bait and I have two main sizes of jerk baits. I got the KVD. I believe it's the HC 200, the smaller size jerk bait that you have. Well, one sec that you have right here. And then the larger size jerk bait that has three hooks that we have right there. And these two jerk baits really cover the entire water spectrum of at least where I'm comfortable throwing a reaction lure. And that is in the, the, you know, two to five feet of water range. And then in the six to 12 foot of water range, depending on how long of a cast you make, what type of line you have and how proper you are jerking that jerk bait. Now I have a jerk bait video coming out as soon as it gets cold around here and those fish start biting the jerk bait really well, I will film a jerk bait instruction video for you guys. And so I have several of the kind of flashier green sort of bluegill more imitation jerk baits and then I have several as well in the more bluish bait fish imitation usually have one or two in my box especially if I'm pond fishing bank fishing in a kayak and I don't have access to all this storage in my bass boat that I usually have I like to have two of those and then I usually have one or two of each of the deeper ones so I have a super clear translucent one for when it comes to that uh that deeper clear you know rocky lake water and then I have the the more whatever this kind of weird color is not clown but uh it's a kind of a standard smallmouth color. It's got orange on the bottom, purple on the top, and clear in the middle. That's what I use for more dingy colored water when it comes to jerk baiting. So that is lure number one for me uh, for winter fishing is going to be the jerk bait because I can jerk it fast, I can jerk it slow. I can do a whole lot of different things with it. And at least in Texas, those fish are not like Unless you have a huge cold front roll through, which we'll talk about, those fish are not totally lethargic. They still want to you know, actively chase and feed a little bit. So that's where the jerk bait comes into play. And when those fish are really active, I'm gonna throw a crankbait. But my crankbait selection changes vastly. So I go from throwing the XD style crankbait, so 4XD, 5XD, 6XD, and the KVD square bills. I kind of take those out of my arsenal from November until uh, January, February until I start throwing uh, the KVD 1.5 again and I throw more flat sided crankbaits and so you know the, my number one flat sided crankbait here is going to be the, uh, the I think it's the KVD 1.5 flat here this dives to about I believe 8 or 10 feet of water and it's Strike King's flattest model of crankbait they make I just find this catches them really well and all of these flat sided crankbaits I'm going to talk about because that water is colder. Those fish don't like a crankbait that wobbles like this, the tail back and forth, or I guess the, not the tail, the end of the bait. They don't like it to wobble as much. They want it to kind of like roll over side to side like this. I can't tell you why. I can just tell you that's the experience that I've had here in the south. And so flat sided KVD crankbait. Um, I like sometimes that that water doesn't get very cold and those fish are a little bit more shallow. I have trouble getting them out of the box here. I will throw the uh, the Series 3 crankbait or the 3XD. It is a 10 to 12 foot diving crankbait. And as long as you reel it slow, it does not have a whole lot of action uh, for those fish. Uh, kind of working my way a little bit, uh, I guess a little bit deeper than shallower. I like to throw two different types of crankbaits for when those bass are a little bit deeper. Uh, the Norman DD22 dives to about 17 feet and is a little bit skinnier than the 5 and 6 XD. Doesn't quite make as much noise, doesn't have as big of a profile. You can supplement in the 6 XD, I guess, but this is just the one that I've had confidence in for a long time. And the last one is going to be the Rapala DT... I believe this is the DT-10. Yeah, the DT-10 and the DT-12 are both great lures because they have that balsa wood. They're a little bit quieter. I want to keep my crankbaits as quiet as possible unless I get to the lipless crankbait section, which I'll talk about here in a second. But the DT-10 uh, the DT and the DT-12 are great crankbaits. And then kind of going back smaller, similar to the, th the Series 3, I throw the DT-6 here and then some really old school lures. I throw the Rebel Deep We Are. I don't know if you guys 
this and see this, I'll have a little B-roll shot pop up here. But the Rebel Deep We Are is a really special lure to me. When I grew up fishing on my home body of water, which is Lake Travis in Austin, Texas, my buddy Clark got me hooked on this old school lure. Rebel no longer makes it. It's called the Deep We Are. You can probably find some on eBay somewhere, but I have it in a crawfish pattern as well as a bait fish pattern. And they are just, I, I can't explain why, they're just amazing. I have such confidence in these two crankbaits. Of course, these both need new hooks on them as well. And the, I think that this one here, the hooks aren't exactly the, uh, the correct size. But for some reason, they just catch fish when that water is colder in shallower water. And even in open water for suspended bass, I have a lot of success throwing the Rebel Deep We Are. And like I mentioned, very similar to the, uh, the Strike King Series 3. And you could compare it very closely to the Strike King Series 3 of crankbaits. Let me try to hold them up here. Right there, the profile is probably pretty similar to you guys, but for some reason, the Series 3 catches them, but the deep we are, the old discontinued crankbait really catches them. And in the winter time, that's when I feel like I bring out most of my discontinued lures, the old fashioned stuff. For some reason, it just gets those winter bass to bite when they are not willing to bite the traditional lures that everybody else is throwing. Staying in the moving bait mood, let's talk about lipless crankbaits. So my favorite one here is the uh, Strike King Red Eye Shad, especially when that water gets cold. I will throw the traditional uh, Bill Lewis rattle trap when the water is a little bit warmer, but when the water is cold, it is hard to beat, especially the one knock sound, the two, or I guess the, the two tap they call it, sound of, of that one knocker inside the uh, the red eye shad. I usually carry four in my tackle box in the uh, half ounce version, all in the two tap. I have found that the relentless crankbaits that have a lot of rattles in them uh, just kind of deter bass. They, they don't really want to eat that in super cold water. So I usually keep two shad patterns. Sorry, my tackle box is a mess. I'll show you here. Two shad patterns of the, uh, of the two tap in terms of the half ounce. Then I have two crawfish patterns in the half ounce and then i almost always keep in my box until i lose it i usually lose a few every single winter uh, i throw the three quarter ounce and the reason for that is because sometimes those bass will sit in such deep water the half ounce is just not an effective lure it takes a certain speed of retrieve to get the uh, the red eye shad to to vibrate back to the boat you can't really slow roll it and so i usually will throw the three quarter ounce if i want to slow roll it but still keep that vibrating action now moving on to the swim bait category, we have both soft swim baits and we have hard swim baits. And I don't really split them evenly. Uh, the rest of the year I'll throw soft baits as much as I'll throw hard baits in the winter, mostly focusing on the glide bait. But if I do throw a soft, small swim bait, it's usually not a little Strike King Rage swimmer on, uh, on a jig head like this as I throw a lot of the time for smallmouth. For some reason, in clear water, maybe in dirty water I'll throw the Rage swimmer, but in clear water I have found the one lure that catches all species of bass, all sizes of bass, in all weather conditions is the grub. Uh, you, this is probably surprising you guys. This is a super old school lure. I throw a white or a gray grub on a jig head just like this, and I have just found the grub catches bass. I can throw it up against the sides of docks. I can slowly slow roll it down a bluff wall and you can catch multiple fish out of a single area on the same cast back to back to back on the grub. I've had several like 60, 70 fish days on Lake Travis, my home body of water. It's a highland reservoir and in ponds before catching them on a grub. I've just found that a single tailed smoke gray or straight white grub catches the, catches the snot out of them. But I really throw those a lot less than I do throw these other two and that is the, the more boot tail uh, pre-rigged swim bait in the glide bait. So when it comes to the pre-rigged, I throw the Mega Bass Mag Draft. I have it in the six and the eight inch version, or the eight and the 10, no, the six and the eight inch. Uh, when it comes to ponds, I'm throwing the six inch. The lakes, I'm throwing the eight inch. And that is really for your, your, uh, your overcast days with a little bit of wind and clearer water. That's where I'm throwing the Mag Draft. You can throw a bigger raid swimmer, like the largest raid swimmer they make, but I found that it doesn't have quite as good of a boot tail action as the, uh, the Mag Draft does. Mag Draft's more expensive, so if you wanna save some money, Get the raid swimmers with a bigger, you know, eight aught owner beast hook or a big jig head. But the problem is that they are not weedless. Neither is this. But I've just found that I, I usually don't get as many lures, as many mag drafts stuck because I'm usually reeling it higher in the water column. Whereas with a jig headed swim bait, especially a big heavy one, I let it fall to the bottom and it gets stuck. So that's my kind of tips with the mag draft. And then the one swim bait that I throw the most in the winter time is the uh, the glide bait. This here is the uh, the Brandon Palinik Storm Arashi glide bait. 
just an incredible glide bait for the price. I think it's like $29, which you might say $29 for a lure, heck no. But as far as glide bait fishing goes, $29 for a quality glide bait like this that catches fish like this. Look at that one, dude. Big glide bait. She came up and just crushed it. Alton Jr.'s fish that he caught on this, which you'll see in a future video. Uh, it's a really, really good glide bait. And so I will have a glide bait instructional coming out here on the channel as well. So I always keep one or two glide baits in the box because it just catches those big, big wintertime bass, especially as it gets more to the January, February part of winter, really catches bass all over the country. And one more specialty hard lure before we talk about soft plastics and jigs, and that is the spoon. Usually for me, it is the flutter spoon. Here I have the Strike King, I believe it's the the sexy spoon, the some, some kind of spoon. And this is the smaller version, it's the four and a half inch version. And here I have one with a dressed feather uh, feather treble on it. And I've just found the, uh, the flutter spoon really catches those bass that are suspended, especially if you have good electronics. Flutter spoon in a pond, unless it's a quarry pond with a clean bottom, I would not recommend throwing a flutter spoon. And if you don't have Panoptics live scope like I do, do not throw this around any sort of wood or hard cover you could, because you're gonna lose it. So as y'all can probably tell, I throw a lot more hard baits than I do soft baits and jigs. That's just my preference when it comes to Texas bass fishing. You might have a different experience, especially if you're a pond angler, you may stick more to the soft plastics. But the winter time of the year is when I put most of your traditional soft plastics away. So the Texas Rig Cinco, the Creature Bait, the Fluke. As soon as that water gets really cold, I'm usually not throwing all the traditional Texas rigs that I always throw in anywhere that I fish. I don't care if it's a a river like this or if I'm in a, a huge pond in a kayak, whatever it is, any situation, I get rid of those traditional soft plastics and jigs and I throw two styles of jigs and only a few styles of soft plastic. And this sun is stinking bright. So the two jigs that I throw, regardless of if you're in a pond or a lake, is going to be the football jig and the finesse jig with an emphasis on the finesse in both football jig and finesse jig. So I love throwing, this here is a unreleased outcast tackle uh, football jig. It will be released, I believe, at the Bassmaster Classic. We also do have some other good football jigs on the outcast tackle side of things, but this here is a prototype, so I can't really show a whole lot of it. But football jigs really catch bass, at least in my experience, the most out of all jigs in the wintertime. This jig here is great because it comes with a very, very uh, thin skirt. I can actually cut this skirt and make it very finesse. And I put, of course, a rage craw on the back. I love throwing this over rock piles, dragging it deep uh, over brush, uh, you know, letting it fall off a, off a drop off. Football jigs just catch fish for me all over the country. But if you're in a pond, yes, you can throw a football jig, focus on these smaller, more finesse versions, but the finesse jig is a great way to catch bass because it goes through all kinds of cover. You can throw it in any situation. And I think it just has more of that finesse presentation as it, the name implies, finesse jig, has more of a finesse presentation over uh, an, a flipping jig, an arky style, a swim jig. I've just found those jigs with their bigger body presence usually don't catch a whole lot of winter bass, but the finesse jig and the smaller finesse football jig usually do. And then because of Texas and I gotta keep those bass honest, I always keep one green pumpkin chatterbait in my boat. Usually a, uh, a heavier version this year is the Strike King Thunder Cricket. It is, I think this is a 5 eighths, yeah, it's a 5 eighths ounce one, just to get it a little bit deeper in the water column to get those bass that of course in the winter time usually aren't that shallow, but you never know when a warm front is gonna come into Texas and really warm up that water prematurely and those bass slide up to get ready to spawn, even though they're not even close to the spawn yet, but they do slide up to feed in that warmer water temperatures. Uh, and so the chatterbait is a great one that I always gotta keep in the box just to keep those bass honest. And so that is it for the hard baits, jig side of things. I only throw a few soft plastics in the winter time, and that is a drop shot, a Ned rig, and one Texas rig that I guess I throw all year round. That I, Again, I throw in there to keep it honest. And we're gonna start with that one, and that one is the swimming worm. Now I've made an entire instruction video on the swimming worms, so check it out in the description below, as well as the Ned rig and the, uh, the drop shot. And so I have all this stuff linked below, not only the products for you guys to purchase, again, as you get closer to Black Friday and to Christmas shopping, make sure you guys are, cl are clicking the links in the descriptions below my videos before you enter Tackle Warehouse to make your purchases because that will track your purchase to my account and help me make a living and provide for my future family, which I'm getting married in 30, eight days, so that, that's incredible. But the few soft plastics, as I mentioned, are the swimming worm, which I have the video linked below. We have the standard finesse worm here. This is actually the uh, the Strike King uh, Elastec material that I either throw on a drop shot for a Texas rig drop shot or on a shaky head. And then I have your Ned rig. This here is the Strike King Ned cutter worm. 
that I love to use. And then the only fluke that I have in this lineup is the Z2 fluke. And that again goes on a drop shot or a jig head to fish vertically for suspended bass. And I have videos on every single technique that I just mentioned there in the description below. So with these soft plastics in this box right here, I believe you guys are ready to go no matter what fishing scenario you are in. And so if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I want you guys as a challenge to comment down below your top five lures you bring with you on your winter fishing adventures. If winter fishing has gotten to your area of the country yet and what your biggest bass of the winter season is so far. That way I know you guys stay to the end of the video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please check out Infinite Outdoors. I will have tons more plugs coming soon. Uh, we're probably going to have some sales some free shipping all that kind of stuff but i'm excited i would love to see this stuff sell out like this not because i want to make a ton of money that is not my goal with this i want this to be a conversation starter not just for teaching people about how awesome the outdoors are but teaching people about how awesome our god is who created the outdoors for us to enjoy the infinite outdoors and the infinite love of our god so we'll see y'all next time on trf